So many of the participants are here. So you people are uh, familiar to me. Many of you uh, are not familiar or you might not know me regarding that one. But today I was rather given one particular topic regarding open discovery tools or rather first of all the discovery tools and specifically highlighting the discovery tool that can be integrated with one of the finest library management software like Koha and the user view find that is how we can integrate that one with Koha. But you see the master of this particular uh, domain is uh, Professor Parthasharjati Mukhopadhyay. He did such a, a kind of work, a lot of work regarding this particular topic and uh, practically this one is a piece of cake to him. But whenever we people are rather trying to uh, intrude into the very territory of that particular individual, so we have to become, we have to be very much uh, aware about that one. That is, at least one fellow who already mustered the total labyrinth or nitty-gritty or integrity or integ integrity of that one. So today, uh, as because we are having just only 90 minutes, I may not be able to show you everything. But at least I can give you some of the exposures to how we can integrate those things and what are the different web resources, web literatures that you can use. And practically speaking, I will tell you about that one that is how OHA right now is being uh, modified to accept those things like, you see, OMI PMA, OAI PMH was there. But right now, it is actually right now giving you the REST API services, you can usually use that one, the REST API service, which is one of the finest extension of Koha. And at the same time, there are so many Z39.50 or SRU protocols that are embedded into Koha. So practically speaking, with this, with this, so uh, discovery tools itself as a whole, uh, if we cannot integrate that one with our own, own software, the meaning of the discovery tool is more or less invalid, you know, because you have to index those things in a discovery tool. And if you can do that one in real time, synchronously from your existing software, it will be much more better for you because this will be one single window through which we can go for that one. But without as, uh, much delay, I will I will go for that one. That is the you know, a, something regarding slide I have very few slides, uh, five, six, or seven slides. And then I will go to the directly to, uh, I already have a virtual web server. I procured that one. So I installed Koha over there and I installed ViewFind in that virtual server. So that server is listsoftware.in. And practically speaking, we'll try to show you, I will try to show you that one, how Koha is running and how it can be integrated with ViewFind. What are the different drivers that you have to accept? So uh, see, for the general people, all these things, these are some kind of a nasty things, you know, nasty things in what sense? So you have to do, or you have to remember something like that one, that is, that is how to customize, how to do this one, a lot of things are there. So once it is set up, then it will be something like that one, you will see the magic, you are getting everything from that one. So I'm not, this particular lecture may not give you that efficiency that you can do that one uh, just from tomorrow, but this will actually trigger something to you that you can also make your hand dirty with people like me, Ajoy, and say Nimai is there, Dr. Nimai, Professor Mukherjee. So what we people are actually doing that one, you people will also be very curious to do with that thing. And that is the motto of this particular workshop, okay? Just to trigger something to you so that you can uh, extend that one further. So without much delay, so I'm going to uh, present my thing. And during my presentation, throughout the session, I will put off my video because I do believe that one, uh, my face as well as my presentation, both are uh, at the same time is not important for everyone. So let me share my screen. So now, so, 
görünür. Okay. Now you got that ones now. So are you getting the screen? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes, After this power tools, do you find them? Okay. So this is what is so before before uh, telling uh, about these open discovery tools, we will find and go on. So we are having some kind of uh, initial talk like that of you see here the tools I'm saying you. So first two tools, these are not actually open source, but I just try to show you that one. That is, these are also there, but uh, apart from these, we are having so many so many uh, open source and at the same time free of cost alternatives. So we may not have to take the help of the Salmon or Wildcat. So these are rather the costlier one, but today we are concentrating on this one, the examples of open source and free discovery. So one is the black light. Project black light, this one, uh, right now it's not being used that much. I haven't seen, but the Harvard University, they are using that one. So uh, if you go to the project backlash slide, so on the site you will see uh, how many libraries are using project backlight. But problem with project backlight is that it is running on the Ruby rails. That is the Ruby as well as the Ruby rails. And a lot of gems are there. That is some kind of a kind of new paradigm for us. Because we are always doing with that one, that is the LAMP stack, that is the Linux, Apache, PHP, and MySQL. So this one is not PHP. This one is rather the developed with Ruby. And that is what is one most important, uh, or you can say one significant drawback of black light. I'm not saying drawback, so I'm saying drawback, but I'm actually saying this one because Many people are finding that one customizing black light is a big problem. And the indexing in black light is also not that much efficient like the viewfind itself because viewfind is using solar. So black light is also using solar. You can configure that one, but black light is not updated like viewfind. So we are having the second one that is the extensible catalog. So and this one, University of City of Rochester, they uh, identified that one. But this is also something like that one. So not being used that much. So we got our own gem that is from the Villanova University's viewfind. Now, see, whenever we're talking about open discovery tools, practically speaking, what we are trying to mean. So now see, this is what we got that one from different, I got that one from different places. So what these open discovery tools should do. So these are rather the one-stop search for all library resources, all library resources. That is, it is not only restricted to a single library, a single library, different resources, the journals, books, audiovisual materials, everything. And at the same time, the other libraries also, that is the remote libraries and collections of those libraries that are also can be integrated with these discovery tools. These are the state of the art web interface. Now this web interface means, that is what most of the cases for the viewfind, I can say that one, a discovery should have a very good interface so that you can uh, search your document, you can identify your document without uh, actually wasting too much of time. And that is what the state of the art web interface. I will show you that one, how we can develop interface. Basically, uh, most of the cases right now, the theme-based web interfaces are coming. And as you know, that one, that is some of the content management software like WordPress, Zoomla, they are having different types of wave interfaces. So in case of discovery tools also, the wave interfaces are there. So ready-made one wave interfaces are there like Bootstrap. And there are the possibilities that you can go directly to the theme-based file and you can, you, can, you can modify, customize that themes with your 
own or we can take that one from different open domain um, resources you can extend that one as a state of the art enrich content now what is that enrich content so apart from giving you the bibliographic information these discovery tools often lead to you the full text these are helping you to get the full text faceted navigation that is you can customize that one as a b c d that is alphabetical you can even go with the uh, year based search so now you can go with that one that is the i uh, see keyword based search so this is what the different types of facets you can see the author facet subject facet period facet so different types of faceted navigation is possible and simple keyword search box with the link to the advanced search. So obviously a search box, a simple search box is there and you can go with the advanced search. Keywords is there, relevancy. And this relevance is that this is a, these discovery tools in real time can retrieve data from other uh, repositories which are following some standards. And these can help you to keep your data updated and this can help you to keep your data uh, you can say current so and recommended reading material that you can integrate user contribution if you want to give something that is user can put their thing so this thing you can you can develop user can log in user can put a comment user can give you the feedback integrating rss so modern opac we can integrate even the social you can we can even integrate that one that is the social network insights so let me check words are not clear and small not readable okay so i will give you that one so you can you can view that one okay so now okay then we are also and at the same time the auto completion stemming mobile compatibility and this so now i am rather going to the next slide Sorry. Now see, uh, okay. Now regarding this one, so regarding the discovery tool, or uh, regarding regarding open discovery interfaces or tools, we need to know some of the protocols that are being used by these discovery uh, tools or open discovery tools or features. So these are not limited to open discovery tools. These particular features can be embedded the commercial ones also so at the back end they are rather working so first one that is the search retrieval via url there is the url based retrieval so xml this is actually uh, whenever you are searching with that one you will be getting some xml based content and that is a contextual query language using that one and this will be transferred transformed into the form of that uh, you can say this can be converted into mark this can be converted into ccf this can be converted into iso 27094 so then we are having z39.50 you know that one this is the tcp ip computer network and it follows the nc niso standard and which is many times used initially before this oip mh and other thing people are using that one z39.50 right now uh if any of you are use, have used that one, the Mark Edit by Terry Rees, a uh, very, very nice tool for uh, dealing with Mark records. So you'll see that one, that is this Mark Edit is having the embedded feature of Z39.50. Uh, that is the from British Library, from other libraries like Library of France, uh, Library of Congress. You can, you can uh, retrieve the different types of records by giving the query you can retrieve that particular record from those repositories so those are actually z3950 uh, enabled or rather you can say implemented sites so our koha today what we will uh, i will show you that one the koha itself is also having the same thing koha also integrated in the latest uh, distribution of koha integrated uh, for five such uh, Z39.50 standard uh, services. And if you know other services, you can also add that one with Kuha itself.
Now, OMI PMH, this Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting, that is a protocol for harvesting the metadata. See, this is what the metadata from many archives. So most of the cases for cataloging purpose, specifically the knowledge processing, this standard helps us a lot. And the REST APIs, these representational state transfer, there's the REST or RESTful API. And this is the API protocol. It defines the routes, the URL. You have to use one URL. And with the help of that URL, you can retrieve the whole thing. And here REST API can help to retrieve the full text also if it is stored on that particular repository. So whenever we are talking about this one, so we'll tell about these four protocols. And after that, so we are going with this one. That is the... Uh, so I'm rather concentrating on view find. So whenever you will be seeing that on the view find, so initially, the people are actually saying that one, you are not getting this thing clearly. So um, the, here also, as because this is one, uh, you see, snapshot I have taken. I will show you that one in real time. So now see, that is where the goal of the view find is search and browse to all of your resources in a single consistent user-friendly interface. That is what is the discovery tool, the goal of the discovery tool. What is that? That is search and browse through all of your resources in a single consistent and user-friendly interface. What you can do, what you can get, cataloging records, institutional repository content, open journal, digital library materials, website, items, license contents, and other questions. So these are the different contents. Just add metadata, and you will get the content. So demos are also available. And this is what is the Project Blacklight. If you go to projectblacklight.org, you will get that one. So Project Blacklight, a multi-institutional open source collaboration building a better discovery platform framework. Mm -hmm. So this black light is having a mark also. Yes, someone is in the chat box. Sir, Sushant to everyone. So this is 12.32. Sushant, are you saying anything? Okay, so we are getting this project backlight. Now we have another thing like geo backlight also, the geospatial data, which is rather been used by the library professionals or rather been what is going on with this one. So geo backlight. So this one, that is you can try that one, you can install that one in your machine. That is how you can do that one. I will say that one in uh, uh, later. So let me complete that one. So we have one is view find, then we got that one, the black light. And then now see, I think most probably all of you visited the view find site and you will see that on the demo of the view find is like that one. That is what, see the faceted is, Susha, if a library subscribes to 30 online databases, how to integrate in ViewFind, their licensed products, how metadata of online users index and make such. Okay, I'm keeping that one right now. I'll uh, tell you that one later. Okay, so good question. So now, this is what is. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. God. Now, see, this is what a demo, you can see this one. And this is what that is utility of using ViewFind or rather why we are saying ViewFind is the base. You can see that one, lot of works are going on with ViewFind. And that is why we're saying that one. So such work is not we are doing with Project Blacklight or other. So, See the search and faceted result, real time record status, and this. So you can go to the view find site and you can have this one. And then you see 
if you go to this particular place, if you go to this particular place, that is, if you click it, so you will get this place. That is, so configuration of viewing find indexing, and I will tell you, show you that one later. That is, now see how we can we can configure viewing find with this. How you can configure this one with this? So this is this one is rather the you see the help file for view find itself and you can use this indexing configuration from this place so we'll try to see that this one in real time so these are the different you see uh, mechanisms or different different configuration for the view find and so right now we are here so i'm going back to our main okay. presentation itself so this one and then you'll see my presentation stops here so there is no more to present you so right now i am going to share my whole screen like thank you yeah so now i am sharing my whole screen Share. So now see, this is what is the view we find running in this particular site. The list software dot in view find. So now this list software dot in is a site uh, where you can see that one that is just to check it dns so, 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 so. So check it now just go to this particular place and type this one Now, here is the IP address of this particular site. Why I am showing this one to you? Because this list software.in is a virtual web server or virtual that is VPS hosting that we procured, I procured just to install POA as well as ViewFind. That is integration of these two. So you have to log into the system, obviously, as a remote user and for that one your list software dot in will not help you have to use this one that is 45 82 75 and 109 as your root user okay so now so just keep this one in mind that is this one is our required ip address for list domain list software dot in so I'm coming back to this one that is list software dot in colon eight zero zero one and here we are getting that one that is Koha itself is installed in this one so I installed that one and I configured and see here so we have to enter into this system so now see once you will enter into this one so you will get this thing this is what you all of you know but now what we want to do we want to connect Koha along with that one, one app from that one, if you want to run ViewFind of your own, that is what Shushanto actually asked me one question, that is he is having a lot of, uh, see, databases, subscribed databases, and he wants to uh, integrate those things together in, with the ViewFind. So we'll try to see that one, that is whether we can do this one 
real, real time or not. But actually, what is important? So first is that. So this is Koha. You as a as as one librarian, as you are using Koha for your library housekeeping jobs, library activities, use the Koha of your own so in your own way. That is not actually important here. So, but whenever we are going to Koha administration, important thing is that important thing is that it is giving you some of the advanced features. Go to the system preferences and the system preferences, just you go to the web service, these web services, web services and under web services, now you will get a lot of such web services. Now web services, these are important. That is where so more than one web are connected together. So with Koha, if you want to integrate that one, we can integrate. So we are not using ILSDI. We are not using we are not using IDF. So we are going to use OAI PMH. This is the first thing. So if you want to integrate find with Koha. The, in Koha perspective, you just are inside the Koha, in the administrative level, you have to do this one. That is what is that? First is OAI PMH. You will see, once you will install that one, you will always see that one. This is actually kept disabled. You have to enable this. Then, this is inbuilt. This will come as usual. Now, where am I? That is OAI PMH auto update enable. And most important thing is that auto update embed item data. That is one. And here is the thing that is configuration file. This configuration file we have to prepare. etc koha conf ai.com. If this is empty, then koha OAI server operates in normal mode. It will not work. Otherwise, it will use uh, to operate in extended mode. So this Koha OAI.conf, this is actually the file where we have written that mode. So this is one. So in this case, our Koha is capable of sending OAI PMH or rather it is able to include or fetch OAI PMH repositories uh, from that is the remote locations. So this is what, and only return 500. This is what, this is the memory for memory. So we are rather giving return 500 records in a response time, you can extend that. So this is the first configuration we have to do in the Koha side. If we want to uh, implement Koha OAI PMH, and if we want to give others, to access our Koha repository. This is first. Now, second is REST API. This is what, that is the RESTful API, so what we talked about. Now, see here, we are having three to five, five such options. So out of these options, most important thing is that REST basic auth enable it, this one said this one as 20. Third one, which is most important, REST authentic, that is authorization to client credential. This REST OAuth to client credential, initially, this will remain always disabled. You have to enable it. So after enabling, and then you enable that one, the public API. So just to make all this enable so that find can take your or can access your Koha repository. <laughs> and let me tell you one thing very clearly. Actually, the most important setup is or typical setup should be one machine, you better install Koha and another machine you keep uh, that is your find, and then better check that is whether the view find is able to 
connect with that second machine and the interoperability is established or not. This is important. But if you try to use that one in a single machine, so you have to install that one, obviously in Linux platform, you install that one in Linux. So install Linux, then install Koha, and then install ViewFind, and then you better try to uh, configure that one. So, okay. Whether the database of the Koha of your university hosted in their server or US or your campus. Okay, this is what Sushant is asking. So I'm rather giving you this example. See, this is not my database. This is not the university database. This is one database, this particular space, the space, or rather this VPS hosting I purchased. This is my individual purchase. So this is not related with our university or my university at all. So this is obviously hosted in US. Okay? And this is what is the data that is what I'm saying. This particular data I'm giving you for uh, displaying this thing or rather showing this particular material. But if you really want to have that one hosted in your machine, in your campus, so you have to have a dedicated IP. Once you get your dedicated IP, then you can make your machine as the host machine. So you can keep all of your data in your machine. There is no such problem with it. But as because I do not have uh, that much of, I do not have that much of so, so classes are going on. On one thirty, I will finish. So, okay. So uh, you see, main problem is that see, I if you keep your data in your own server, it's okay. But if you are keeping your data in other server, obviously there is a problem. But here, no data. So all the data I actually uploaded, I will show you that one. That is the all mark files I'm having, all mark files I'm having. See, what I did, I downloaded the mark files from Springer. And that total mark file size is, that is 1.1 GB all Springer databases, data sets. I will show you that one uh, right now. So that's where I, and I uploaded that one and I actually integrated that one, imported that one into uh, this one, this, this, this software dot in, in Koha itself. And then uh, I, I installed ViewFind and I, I'm trying to connect that one with that so that we will see that one later. So, you can keep your database in your hosted server, but you require a dedicated IP. So now here is the main important thing is that after you made this REST API configurations, you need to do one thing. So that is you have to go to your patrons menu and you have to create one patron who will be responsible for this REST API. You can make this one the administrator also, no problem. So as because you see, I'm rather writing admin and searching this one. And here you see, this is the admin, so it's my name. So I'm the user. Now, you just go to the more, and here you have to go for the making the API keys. That is RESTful API, REST API keys are formed here. So click it. Now see, we are already having this one, these two keys. If you delete this keys, suppose I am deleting this keys. So I'm not having these keys anymore. So now click this one. See here, you type just any name. You can give your name also. So save it. And here you see two keys are rather there. Description is you find. Client ID is this. Secret ID is this. This is just like your Google recapture keys if you want to integrate in your uh, side machine. So important thing is that you have to keep this one safe somewhere in a uh, notepad or note sheet. So just you, I'm keeping that one right. So let me store this one. 
not bad. So now I saved that one. So now you can ask me, that is we are not getting what you are saying at all. Yes, what I'm getting, many of you might not be actually getting that one properly. Okay, let me tell you that one again. What I am doing, first thing is that I'm not talking about that one. That is what Sushantu asks that one. That is whenever we'll be running one discovery interface and we'll have a lot of resources, not Koha. Koha might be there or may not be there. How we can actually integrate all these things with a single discovery interface or with a single interface with a view find. Okay, this is one thing. So what I'm rather saying, so first is if we have the Koha, now how we can and Koha means what? Suppose you are using different databases in Koha or different collections in Koha, books, records, CDs, everything. Now, whenever you are searching, querying something with that one, that is uh, a particular query, that is any keyword. So it will show you everything that is not only the journals, not only the books, across the different types of resources, it will show the result to you. So this is what we are trying to show. Now question is from where the viewfind will get the data. One thing is that you can export the, export the records from, uh, export the records from MARF, export the record from Koha. And you can import that one by using uh, viewfind. Second thing is that you can make one mechanism by which viewfind, whenever viewfind will run, viewfind will always check that one. That is whether something new is there in the Koha repository, connected Koha repository or not. If it is new, it will bring that one. It will fetch that one to the viewfind interface. This is what is the goal. And for that one, just to initiate, just to maintain the interoperability, we have to, uh, this is the REST API. For OMI PMH, you haven't to do anything. And for REST API, so you have to generate that one. First of all, you have to go to, first of all, you have to go to the home. Second is, if someone is using that one, you can try this one, go to administration. Then go to system preferences. Now go to web interface services. And then enable OMI PMH all. And here etc koha.koha.oi.conf. You can only use this one if you are a super user and you can log into the Koha at the back end and you can write something of your own using the super user command that is pseudo command. Otherwise, keep this one blank. And then in REST API, so enable all the things. This will actually make that one. This will say Koha. That is if any request is coming, it has to forward those information to that particular request. So now request means what? So where is the authentication? And this is the third one the authentication credential enable. And for that one, we are doing the keys. We are making the keys. So what are the keys? The You have to who Now keys are always given as a user. That is who will be logged into it. So now go to patrons menu. Go to the patrons. And here, find out the user. You can give this one to anyone. No problem. So it's not that only uh, the admin should get this one. But if you uh, give that one to other fellows, you have to provide them the permission for all. So let me go for something. I don't know, but right now, I do not have any email address available. So I have to create the email address. So now just go to the more and manage keys. So now you see that key is already there. Okay. So the keys are already there. So better you keep these keys aside. So now Kuba has become one, uh, she has become one repository also. That is anyone can, uh, anyone having these 
client key and server key, and that is client ID key pairs, they can access this Koha. If you allow them to use this one, they can also extract information from Koha. So now, okay, now I'm going to this one. So uh, it's rather in the Koha platform. So I'm logging out from Koha and I'm now giving you this one. That is our uh, interface. Okay. So as I logged out, it's not there. Just here you click like that one. Sign to matrix. And we are getting four results. So sign to matrix four results. Now these are four results. Now you see, these are not any, this collection is not any library collection. These are rather the Springer collections, okay? So I just imported that one as rather this file. So now you can extend that one as, as this. If you click this one as book, now you will get that one, see. You will be getting 11,782 results. Uh, practically speaking, I imported here near about 20,000 records from Springer. So uh, if you, you are screen sharing, so just let me show you one thing so that you are getting this one. On the so you will tell me that one if you can't see this. So are you getting this? USB drive contents. So are you seeing any any uh, directory contents or USB drive in your screen? No, sir. No, sir. No, no, no. No, okay. no it is showing your Koha page. It is showing what? Koha. Koha page okay. where you no, are changing, sir. Okay. Page. Okay. 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 Let me share my whole screen. That is what that is whole screen. Okay. Now, are you getting that one? Yes. Now, it is. now it is. Okay, now see, in e, I have E drive and then the. Sh okay. Uh, no, stop. Not here. And here you see mark files. See, these are the mark files. So here I am having near about 1 GB of mark files. I only imported these two, first one and second one in this Koha because I am having only 80 GB of space and I do not know, I, I have two, G, two CPUs as a virtual host and only 8 GB of RAM. So I was hesitating that one, if I import everything that will uh, clog the memory. So that's why I didn't upload everything. I just uploaded two files. So um, you can you can download that one also in the spring year, all mark files are available. These are near about one um, GB of size. So this is like, you see, okay, so enter. Now, Now see this one. Now see, this is what this is Springer records, and and here you see that is the available, and here mark implementation and see access our metadata downloader, so. So with this help, see, 
this is marked sample for CLC control number. So from this place, you can download the mark records from this place. Okay. So this is what I did. So now I'm going to this place. So okay, now it's there. Now this is our turn to install and connect um, viewfind uh, so that viewfind can talk to uh, this one that is our Koha installation. So now let's uh, check what is the now condition of viewfind. Now see this is what So this is what is viewfind is uh, working, but in this particular space, viewfind is not connected and viewfind is not configured. So just if we ask book, you'll see that one, it will show you that is no results. So nothing is there. It is not giving us any result. So as because there is no such thing. Okay. So now, how can I enter into that one or how can I change the settings? So those who have this one, that is uh, any, any dedicated web server or this one, you know that one, you have to enter yourself or you have to uh, go into the server inside the server to configure that one so first is let us go to that one see this is what we are getting the visuals now i have to go to the server that is list software dot in so you have to go to this one and in that case, you can use putty one software, putty, else you can use the command line and the command is SSH, uh, that is root at the rate of 45.82.75. Dot one zero nine. See, this particular uh, address is actually the the domain name list software dot in. I already shown you that one. So you have to go to this place. So then it will ask us the password. So it is asking that one fingerprint, and just click yes. So okay, now it is asking the password. Now see, uh, we are here, our Linux platform. Now see why I am doing this one here, because see, if you use uh, AMS or like that, so installation of this one, at least Koha, installation of that one is a bit cumbersome one. So that is why I am rather taking, I have taken this real time example. So now, See here, we have to go to the different places. So usually what we have to do, okay, then chat boards, see. Sushant, okay. You have good question. Okay, I will, I will say you that one. Everything I will tell you after the end of this one, okay? So just, uh, Allow this one, okay. So fine. So now you see, you are, we are here. Now just go with the ls command. So see here, nothing is there. So now go to cd usr slash local slash viewfind. So you are under viewfind. Now ls l see here these are rather the different files we are having uh, 
for view find and the view find itself okay so another question is there whether the mark records of all the subscribed database client databases c mark records of springer these are free they are giving 1.1 gb of databases mark records free I didn't check really, but many of them, they are giving that one free, the mark records. So only thing is that you just have to download that one and you have to import that one to Koha. So, so these records are, you can say, uh, you can, as whenever I search that one, Springer, I got that one. Now, you see, as you ask that one, so I can show you that thing also. You see, Elsevier. So whenever you are going for that one, see, this is what is Elsevier's thing. Now, manage your Elsevier solution. That is VPADS, accessibility support. Now, remote, remote access option. See, federated authentication, email-based authentication, products and services. If you have an account, then API. That is what API is to retrieve information from Scopa, SkyVal, Science Direct, and others. So this is what and see that is mark records. We offer complementary high quality mark records through SCLC for books purchased on Science Direct. Mark records are not available for Science Direct journal. So this is what the policy of different. Uh, vendors or different aggregators are different. So some are giving you that one and some are not. So this is what the download the full guide. So now check it. What is about Taylor and Francis? Mark records. Mark records. Say this one, how do I request and retrieve mark and keyboard records? So now see, to request mark records, navigate to the mark record section, the mark tab on the librarian's dashboard. This is what the dashboard, request all mark records, request updates this one. And this is what is request all mark records. Okay, so now librarian's dashboard. And obviously, if you go to that one, that is what, see, Taylor and Francis, Taylor and Francis, librarian's dashboard. This is obviously chargeable. See, see this one, that is what? Only thing the dashboard and then so it's in the movies. Okay. And Taylor and Francis online. That is why the registration is important. So online account. So you have to log in librarians or librarians. So ch check this one out. So this one, I clean with you how to register. And this thing is click it. So if you want, you can get this one. Personal account. And you, if you need to have administrator, manager, institution, or simply contact us. So you can register yourself. You can register yourself. That is what. And then free Taylor and Francis online account today. So you can get this one. And most probably they will give you that one also. Do check it. I didn't check that one. Okay. So now I'm going back to my main presentation itself. So this one, okay, 
this thing. So I'm here. So what I was doing, so I was actually in this menu. So now you see, this is what is the view find. And once you are under view find, now view find is having uh, something like that on the config file. So cd if I did config, this is the config, a configuration file. See the config config file. So cd config and then so config. What is that? That is config the import mark authorities. Logis put a view from cd dot dot. So l s l. Okay. So config is the directory and local. Okay. Cd just to go to local directory and then go with on ls. Now you will get that one that is files like one folder config, another folder httpd viewfinder.com. So, first of all, let us check what is the content of httpd viewfind. So, go for this one nano httpd hyphen. And see, this is what is the configuration file for view file. So this configuration file is giving you to change that one. That is, what are the different areas that you have to change and what are the different places that you have to uh, mo modify. So I'm, I'll be coming to this one uh, just a few minutes later. So last, I'm just actually showing you this on the content. So come back to the main portion and then go to cd config and go for ls l now see a view find directory view find defined and once you are under view find check it now see here is the important thing now you are under view find. Now it is asking or it is giving you two files main. One is koha.ini, another one is config.ini. Two files. So first of all, we will go with the config.ini. So check it sudo nano config.ini. This is what config.ini is nothing but the configuration file. Now, see, you will understand that one, how, why we find is coming, because in the config.ini, URL is already set up as HTTP list software dot in view find. This is generally, that's when I install view find. So it, this file was written by the view find itself. So if you have the proxy, you have to go for that one now email. Now here you have to write your email address. The title is coming as library catalog. So you can check that one as, as because this catalog is not library catalog. You can check it as the demo catalog. Demo catalog. Title separated is given. Now here is the theme. I told you in the initial slides that is one discovery interface should have state of the art web interface. This is what is the web interface. See what are the different web interface we are having. See bootstrap 3, this is the HTML theme. Bootprint 3, theme. Sanda 1 theme. And this semicolon denotes that these are not activated. If you remove this semicolon this will be activated so we are not activating this one just we have i'm showing you the one that is what are the important thing now is production js 
Now, this particular file is a big file, but what is important, because this is viewfind, this is not Koha, and this is viewfind 9.1 C session, we need to go to the catalog portion here, you see. See, these are the ILS divers. Viewfind will interact with. So you have to open config any under viewfind, and then these are the available diver. So if all the divers are rather having there, it's already annotated. See, Koha, basic database access only. Koha LSDI, more feature via IS, ILSDI API. We didn't do it. Now see the Koha REST, the most feature complete Koha driver using Koha's REST API. It requires at least Koha 20.5 and Koha plugin REST extension found at this place. So you have to use this one, otherwise this one will operate. So this is a separate installation. This is not coming with the Koha. Now go to, so these are the things. Now here you will see that one, which diver is enabled. See, in our case, the diver is Koha, right? So diver is Koha. So it's already set, Koha, now these are not right now required. So we already set up the diver here. So account, so now just if you quit from nano, just control O to write the whole thing, then okay, control X will be here. So we already studied the config in and we have seen that one. The config in is reflecting our web URL for view find, which is list software dot in slash view find. And it is also showing that one view find is having the diver enabled and the diver is Koha diver. Okay. So now I am reading this Koha dot in. Sudo is not required because hash prompt is there, but still, it's a good practice to use the consistency. Koha. Koha dot in. Now see, whenever we are using that one, see Koha is asking for our MySQL ID and see, these are already actual, no semicolon is there. And that is why we need to make this one. So host is the local host or rather host is, we'll be changing this one to host. This one is list software dot in. Okay. Now port is 3306 because this is the default port. Apache port is there. Now username for the MySQL username. So MySQL username is root MySQL password. It is MySQL password is T U K I two database is Koha given, but in our cases we prepared a database with the name Koha Library. Library and URL is HTTP, change the URL. This software dot in. So, first portion is over. See, these are the settings and credentials used to Koha's MySQL database. So this is what well, it may be necessary to create a new credentials for access by logging into 
password console create user new user identify by password so if it is not working so you have to go with this one so instruction is given here so now these are the different types of sports for your references and just go to the downwards and see transaction history is there okay so so it's over so now you have to write it so press ctrl o so now name the any enter and then ctrl x so it's already there that is view fact so is there now let us check whether viewfind can access some of these things and not. So, how we can do this thing? So, our case is this is koha.ini. So, let we check whether this is uh, we're getting or not. So, this is the client ID I, right now. See, okay, you can say that one. So, what about this one? That is, we already made that one restini. See, our diver we settled as Koha. It is not Koha.ini. Now see, config LSL. So, if you can see the dot. So, LSL config. Mm -hmm. is l and here so i'm going to this one that is config cd c o n f i g config and l c d now see here you will see a lot of any files are already given by viewfind. So we are using only koha.ini file. See this one. If we go to the top, you will see that one. See, three files are there. One is that is the koha.ini file. One is koha.ilsti. Another is Koha REST in here, INI. So actually we are using the first one. So that's why we haven't provide any client ID or this one. But if we use Koha REST dot in here, so then we have to use the client ID there and this one. So you can go with that one also, Koha REST dot in here. So it's there. So let us copy this one, Koha REST dot in here, to so cd config so let check it pwd so we are here that is user local viewfind config viewfind so here we have the koha.in so we can make that one cp k o h koha rest dot i n i to user local View find local. Now I forgot that one. I have to check. That is what. How you can check? You can check that one. There is one good tool known as Win SCP. This is only available in Windows, but uh, uh, connects uh, that is the compatible one is available in other places also. So here yeah, we just have to write that at IP address that is 45.82.75.109 this is for list software dot in and then type here the root and password 
and then then login accept see i'm already logged into that particular directory from here so i can even upload something so this is root click it i need to check that particular position so we copied but actually i have to go to here you will see user then you see local Uh, user local view find then local then config then view find yes so I have to type this address so here I am coming, that is user, local, view, find, local, config, view, find. Config, config, dot, no, config, after config, view, find, slash, v u f i n d view, find, then check it. A view file. Enter. Okay, it's there. So now uh, check it whether it's there or not. Okay, it's not showing. So I have to check that one from this place. So um, user local view find local cd dot dot cd dot dot cd local cd vufind view find oh my god yes i think it's very config cd config cd view find Now see, the Koha rest in is there. What I was actually telling you, initially that was Koha. And right now we are having the Koha rest in. So go for nano Koha rest dot INI. Click it. Now here you will see that one. See, this is what you are getting, client ID. In this case, place, you have to type, but in this place, you have to type, delete, client ID, okay. So, copy it from this place, client ID. Control C, copy it here. Sudo nano. K O H A R E S T dot i n i m e so come to this place yes. so now let us copy this one 
copy and then right click paste close it now client secret client secret copy it copy it and paste it here close it okay so now you got that one so now opac url that is what is the leave this comment out to omic opac, opac links so if this client is so our opac url your Cocoa Opac Rebel display if you want to provide a direct link to your Cocoa Opac. So okay, we are giving this one. So Koha Opac change this one to okay, leave it right now because we are running out of time. So okay. So this is what default repulsion extra storage retrieval everything is there so we did it so control o then you see enter x so it's already we have written this one now what do one sir again susan asked one two so there's any now I am uploading, I am showing you one particular place. It's over. Don't save. I am not saving this one. Okay? So I am rather showing you one very good writer. So if you click this one, you will see how you can configure everything. It's a very good uh, say, uh, recommendation or site. So where you can see that is how you can integrate Koha and Viewfind. It is already there. So, in okay, case, Susan, whether the session of live demo will be in YouTube, okay, then. So, Susan, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, are you listening to me? Do you really think that one, this is, uh, this will be helpful and should be, should go to YouTube? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So now I'm showing you this one. So why? So that is what the integration because you see it might be the time will not permit to go all for this one. So just I'm showing you one example of this one. See, REST API is integrating this one. So importing data to be find. So one thing is important. This if you see Koha, the way Koha stores information and the way you find indexes, so this is different. So that's why you require to require to change this one, this thing that is what collection. So where it is, so now I'm rather showing you just this one, so it will be helpful for you. So just see this particular site, check this one. So go to this place and just click this one see what we are doing so we are already copying one mark local properties that is a mark file because how will give us mark file so we'll be changing that one to mark file so it is rather going to that on user local so it is see this is actually user local view find local import so this is what is a full copy all so i think uh, let me check this one whether full thing is there or not no so okay yes local import so click it so now it's there so what we need to do why we are doing this one because this mark local properties you need to change some of the parameters otherwise this won't be actually um, uh, collected so now this one is important go to this place so copy it 
how can you go to this place copy it now go to this place and see sudo nano space now this one enter it now here you see this one see this collection come to this place collection make this one building delete it these three and then see collection you have to make this one change it collection this one so or oh no will be u i l building so collection make this one to nine two nine five two eight b u i l collection nine five two eight collection and delete this thing nine five two eight now come to this second one this one and make this thing as nine five two b nine five two b then building should be nine five two c nine five two c this one and the most important is id see this is what is the important one mind it so id equals to nine nine c nine nine c nine 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 c comma fast so once this is there now control o save it go for x so you got that one so you change this one okay so now you have to this one we are in you have to change this one as this so now go to this place so okay. let's check in copy it control so okay. copy it and then go to this place and paste it there so it's there now edit it how you can edit that is which one you have to edit this one that is you have to go to this one and see this oai means in oai pmh you already wrote one thing that is poha dot this one that oai dot in so this is what we are actually trying to change so now sudo nano space the harvest o a i dot i n i now see here so you got that one so one set you have to write so check this one copy this one and put that one here in this particular file where you put it so take it to this place okay and here always remember that one that is you cannot uh, this one Control copy, control V. So basically, this is the problem of us machine having the BPS server. Okay, so okay, now I am type keeping it here.
section. No. I'm not getting that one. Okay. Did it. Now, copy and pasting that one here. It's not getting that one. I do have no time right now to write. Okay, now see that is what Oha. Now I I means insert. Let's check it whether this will let me. Okay, got it now. Combine section name, combine records to section time. Okay, now we just have to delete this one. Okay, I think most probably our cursor is somewhere else. So delete. Now, here you see you have to change this one uh, that is HTTP LIS SO FT WARE dot in L I S S O F T W A R E dot dot in now see opac port delete 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 opac port is eight zero zero two delete 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 Okay, now this one and this one will be again UPAC IP that is HTTP colon LISSOFT dot in then Delete, 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 delete. Now this one, eight zero zero two. Okay, done. So now control O might be something maybe there. So let's check it. Now getting the data. So only thing is that you have to, because you already have written that one. So once we'll do this one, just check the um, window itself. So you'll see that one. So it's okay. Now, sudo this one that is harvest. This is what the harvester, this will harvest something from this. Check it. See, this is processing Koha. It is going to Koha and it is trying to connect Koha. And from Koha, it will retrieve those things. Okay. So now see modifier. But there might be some uh, time it will require because there are 20,000 documents. So whenever it will be retrieving, it may retrieve 20,000. So uh, it will take some bit of time. So during this time, you can uh, do this one, check this one. And if you think uh, more uh, is required, so right now you won't get any result. You have to uh, wait for this. Uh, 31 participants is here. I am getting this one. So I think with this, I think this is right now uh, the time for completion of this one. Uh, as because I started a late, so I, 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 I completed that one. So it will take time. So after that, you better try to go to listsoftware.in.view find and then try to check whether the data is available or not. So if the data is available, okay. If not, just let me know. I will make this one correct and I will give you the code to the YouTube channel itself. I'll submit that one to uh, 
Dr. Nimai Shah, who is actually the organizing this one, so that you will get that one. Uh, that is the full thing you will get. So with this, I think uh, I already did a, so something which is rather very nitty gritty and many of you are cursing me because of this one as because you are not getting this one properly. But I think many of us are having the desire to uh, do this one, but you are uh, not uh, getting the impetus of uh, doing this venture. So I did it. And with this, um, I think this very technical session is over. And if required, then I will do that one later. Okay. So Thank you, was sir. that very technical? <laughs> a, yes. bit, a bit. Okay. So technical. I, interesting, okay. sir. Very interesting. So we have some question in chat box, sir. Maybe take, sir. Okay, okay. Yes. I found most of the question from Susan. All questions from Susan and only one question I didn't actually answer. That is what are the mark records, all the subscribed online databases available free of charge. If those fellows are giving you the API access, then you can integrate that one. But many a times they are just giving the demo. They are not actually giving the whole thing. So you just check it. If you are rather purchasing, you know, so whenever you are purchasing the printed thing, so they are also giving that access. So that is why. So you just check those vendor policy, that is the, their policy. And if they are giving you the access API, then you can configure that one in the, that is in, that this is a Koha. But the general mark, I, I couldn't show you that one. So, but there is one any file for, getting the mark records from the vendors. So you just have to put that particular IPI given by the vendor and you can fetch the record. So it's not a big problem, but the problem is getting the API itself. Here's Raj, what is the cost of subscription of list, list of list, list LIS software dot in for Koha and Wufine? So it VPS software, VPS, uh, actually I purchased this domain which is having two, two CPUs and um, two CPUs with 8 GB of RAM and 80 GB of SSD and I had to pay uh, 7,000 like that per year. I have to pay that one and recently I increased that one because I'm so thinking that one, I will open this one for everyone who wants to learn Koha and who you find and who wants to uh, make their hands or make themselves proficient with all this integration. I will let you know that one. That is what is the password and all these things. You can do this one. No problem. As because I am the super administrator. If you do anything wrong, I will delete that one and I will reinstall this one. No problem. Thanks for your support, sir. And 